The holidays are creeping up, and you know what that means. It's nearly Call of Duty time! Activision's AAA shooter is trying something a bit different this year. So if you're looking for the deets you need to know before you dish out your hard-earned dough for Call of Duty Modern Warfare, you've come to the right place. With an annual release strategy, the Call of Duty franchise rotates between a few different developers. Treyarch handled 2018's Black Ops 4, but the reins for Modern Warfare are back in the hands of Infinity Ward, along with additional development from Beanox and Raven Software. Infinity Ward created Call of Duty back with the 2003 original and have handled several games since. Their most recent was Call of Duty Infinite Warfare in 2016. Infinity Ward's position as Modern Warfare's developer is significant, because this game is not a true sequel, but a reimagining of the past Modern Warfare games, which are what made Call of Duty the worldwide phenomenon it has become. Infinity Ward also developed the original Modern Warfare game and its direct sequels, so they have experience on their side. Call of Duty Modern Warfare were released for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on October 25, 2019. There is no word on whether the game will release on the Nintendo Switch. Call of Duty has not yet appeared on the system, although who knows, this might be the first entry to do so. Fantastic news on this front, it appears that Activision is seeing the writing on the competitive shooter wall and is ditching the season pass. Instead, they will be releasing content and additional maps for free. Additionally, Activision is offering a few different editions of Modern Warfare for each system – Standard, Precision, Operator, and Operator Enhanced. Standard is just a game and will run a $59.99 price tag. Operator costs $79.99 and will include some exclusive digital items, while Operator Enhanced will cost $20 more and include 3,000 Call of Duty points. Finally, the GameStop exclusive Precision Edition will cost $99.99 and will include everything in the Operator Edition plus a steelbook, controller wrap, and control freak thumbsticks. If you really want to drop some cash, you can also pick up the Dark Edition, which comes with an actual working pair of night vision goggles. It'll run you $200, but it's a pretty impressive throwback to Modern Warfare 2. A collector's edition of that game also came packed with some MVGs. Finally, pre-ordering the game will net you an in-game prestige token and tactical knife skin. Pre-ordering at GameStop will get you a poster and in-game animated calling card, and the PS4 store will unlock a PS4 dynamic theme. We won't be able to get our hands on the full version of Call of Duty Modern Warfare until October 25th, but we do know and we'll be able to play the beta. This will be the first test of Modern Warfare's cross-play systems, so it will hopefully ensure a smooth launch. There are currently two weekends scheduled in September for the beta. The first runs from September 12th to the 16th, and it is exclusive to players on PlayStation 4. Those who have pre-ordered the game will be able to start playing on the first day, but everyone else will need to wait until September 14th. The very next weekend will be the big one, September 19th to the 23rd. That's when the beta will be open to all platforms. Again, those who have pre-ordered will have access the first two days, with everyone else jumping in on September 21st. This will be your chance to see how things are shaping up and if Modern Warfare will bring you back into the COD fold. It would hardly be a Modern Warfare title without Captain Price, even a reimagined one. It's good to see the British operative back in action. You have execute authority. Bravo 6. Going dark. With a new take on Price, Modern Warfare has brought in a new voice actor, Barry Sloan. He is replacing Billy Murray, who voiced him in the first three Modern Warfare games. As of right now, it does not appear that the player will ever take control of Price. However, thanks to Game Radar, we do know a few of the playable characters. Early on, the player will control Kyle Garrick, a British ex-soldier turned counter-terrorism police officer. Garrick joins up with Price after an attack from Al-Qaeda on Piccadilly Circus. There's also an operative named Alex who the player will control, but details on him are being kept secret so far. We also know a bit about the NPCs significant to the story. There are two sibling freedom fighters named Farah and Hader, and the villain is a rogue Russian general inspired by Apocalypse Now's Colonel Kurtz. Part of what made Call of Duty such a massive phenomenon was the accessibility of its multiplayer modes. Even people who weren't going to be storming the top of the leaderboards could jump in, snag some kills, and feel pretty good about themselves. However, a big change is coming to multiplayer in Modern Warfare – the removal of the minimap. This change could be significant to how Call of Duty plays. Kotaku suggests that it will slow down matches and force players to operate with more caution. It will also make map awareness much more important and amplify the effectiveness of certain perks and killstreaks. For some, the removal of the minimap won't mean much. If you played in hardcore variants in previous COD games, you didn't have one anyway. For the casual Call of Duty player, however, the lack of a multiplayer minimap in Modern Warfare will significantly change the way you play the game. That said, some things never change. Both aforementioned perks and killstreaks will be making a return in Modern Warfare, and without a minimap to help you navigate your surroundings, that means strategy is everything this time around. 
Modern Warfare will shake up things quite a bit from 2018's COD entry with its different ways to play. We know that the single player is returning after being gone for a year, which is nice to see. We also know that a relic from Modern Warfare games past is returning, Special Ops. Special Ops last showed up in Modern Warfare 3, created as a way for two players to enjoy campaign-style missions together. Special Ops will let you and your friend watch each other's backs as you complete objectives. It never gained the fervent fandom of zombies, but it's good to see it making a return. Speaking of zombies, they are nowhere to be seen in Modern Warfare. Warfare, at least not yet. There has also been no indication that Blackout's Black Ops 4's take on the Battle Royale genre will return. However, Cod Leaker, the gaming revolution, who has a fairly good track record, claims that the Battle Royale mode will be featured in Modern Warfare. One new multiplayer mode that developer Infinity Ward seems very excited about is called Gunfight. It is designed to be hectic and fast-paced, and looks great for two friends trying to warm up before diving into the full-scale multiplayer. It could also be a blast to watch in professional competition, although it sounds like it may be a bit too randomized for the esports crowd. Gunfight places two teams of two players on a very small map. Rounds are short and loadouts are randomized, meaning you have to be proficient in a variety of strategies and be able to communicate well with your teammates. There is no healing and no reviving, meaning rounds can be over in a matter of seconds. Teams win a point in gunfight by knocking out the other two players, and the round's rules change if a round goes over 40 seconds. The first team to 6 points wins a match. It could get very competitive, very chaotic, and very loud in here. One of the most important aspects of Call of Duty Modern Warfare will be its multiplayer. The competitive mode has always served as a major draw to COD. 2019's entry will feature an extremely welcome first for the series, cross-play between PC, PS4, and Xbox One. It will be available straight out of the box, and Forbes writes that it should work seamlessly. Crossplay could be an example of the series taking direction from Fortnite, but Forbes writes that its inclusion in Call of Duty could wind up being monumental for gaming in general. By including it on release in Modern Warfare, it normalizes crossplay as part of the industry. It could make it the default, rather than a selling point for a few games. That's big, and it's something that practically all gamers can get behind. It will also feature input matchmaking meaning console players won't get outgunned by people playing on PC with a mouse and keyboard. Buy it for the system you want, and don't worry about your friends having it on the same one ever again. We know Modern Warfare will not be a direct sequel to Modern Warfare 3, but it won't be a straight reboot either. Rather, it's being what's referred to as a reimagining, bringing classic Call of Duty sensibilities into the modern age. It makes sense considering the title. Besides, this is not an original concept in entertainment. Polygon notes that several popular franchises have used this approach in the past few years, including games like God of War, Doom, Tomb Raider, etc. This will help update and scale back some of the bombast in COD, and will also allow the plot to escape from the post-nuclear war point that it had reached. Modern Warfare will look to provoke its audience with a morally grey world. Taylor Kurosaki, the game's narrative director, offered this example. The world we live in is more complex than the one 10 years ago. Enemies often do not wear uniforms. As a result, civilian collateral damage is a bigger part of the equation. Translation, there's going to be some ugly moments in Modern Warfare. The trailer for Modern Warfare promises that you're watching actual in-game footage, and that's part of the hype surrounding COD's new entry. A brand new graphics engine will modernize the way the game looks, allowing all sorts of fancy new ways to show off. US Gamer has a rundown of a lot of the technicalities of this new engine, but here's the basic gist. It makes everything look real, real pretty. It will support 4K resolutions and DirectX ray tracing, meaning all of your fanciest equipment will be put to the test. It will allow for much better representations of lighting and cloth, and will feature, quote, advanced photogrammetry, a new hybrid tile-based streaming system, persistent volumetric lighting, physically-based rendering, and more. For most of us, that technical jargon means little more than, uh, the game's gonna look pretty as hell. For a few people reading this, however, that's probably some serious pillow talk. Joel Emsley, Modern Warfare's art director, summed it up nicely, quipping, quote, we don't want to be the brown game anymore. Most Call of Duty multiplayer maps over the last decade have followed a similar design philosophy, basically symmetrical, with three distinct lanes leading to objectives and allowing teams to flank and set up ambushes. Infinity War's multiplayer design director Jeffrey Smith sat down with Game Informer to explain that Modern Warfare's design philosophy is taking a different approach. He explains that, while great for balance, the three-lane symmetry made COD maps feel more like arena shooters. Modern Warfare is going for a more realistic interpretation of war, so his team is trying to disguise the lanes and make the symmetry more convoluted. To make the locations of objectives feel more realistic, the team instead used a new philosophy of hero buildings. Smith calls these buildings the, quote, power positions on the map, and they are used as the focal points, rather than the middle of each lane. Call of Duty Modern Warfare isn't looking to reinvent the wheel of multiplayer map design, 
But it is nice to know that Infinity Ward has heard some fan grumblings and wants to address some of the feelings of sameness that tend to seep into Call of Duty. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite games are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.